Hello and most welcome to 1720 of the Heidegger series. And today I found a new paper of great interest by Ohad Nachtomi and Andreas Blank. And it is about aspect blindness and meaning blindness. It's at JSTOR for those interested from January 2015 and its sources EUN, the Jerusalem Philosophical Quarter, Quarterly. This is a bit discussions that already has turned up in uh, previous lectures and it is about what role does the aspect take and how is it in Wittgenstein's writings compared to aspect blindness and mind blindness those two aspects compare or two different takes on the possibility of non-understanding of different approaches to one and the same thing And to be quite specific, this goes in deep to question, what is this aspects in self? One suggestion coming from Schulte, as we read before, experience and expression he suggests that aspect seeing or aspect blindness only pertain to very fine details and not not the most complex details of reality but almost like the fine dish mech of reality to be able to appreciate a particular musical tone having the ability to to discern specific details in art music, literature, many different aspects of reality. Ohad Nachtomi and Andreas Blank are suggesting that it is there are much more things to this it has a higher level of complexity than only that that it is connected to understanding language on the whole because seeing something as same necessitates aspect seeing because all we have so to speak you cannot see sameness directly it is an effect of aspects and that's a stronger vari variety of 
this thesis of information systems. Sorry, uh, this is a stronger thesis of this approach and seeing that a being aspect plane can can hinder understanding over the whole of language or being able to participate to a higher or lower degree of proficiency is under threat. It is made impossible or hardened, not as accessible for understanding language would be if we do not see sameness in it, we don't identify things, because you don't see sameness directly, you see something, to be precise, something completely different. And then there is an inferno, uh, inferno of sameness. And here also the question of rules are coming in. That rule following is in Wittgenstein such an important feature of reality. And that would be made impossible because rules in the end are the ability to see aspects, being able to take them in dealing with them. take them in and handle them, needs a sort of variety of the duck rabbit. Duck rabbit as an identity can only be seen if the different aspects are accessible. And for rule following to be possible, it, is an, it necessitates the ability to see how a rule progresses into a long array of, for instance, an example often given is numbers. A number series changes according to certain rules. And to discover that change, it needs aspect sense in the temporal, uh, temporal aspect. So their argument, in short, is that aspect seeing is so much more important than previously understood and it goes well beyond the rather limited take that you are King to take us on it that it has to do with specific fine geschmack aspects 
is that it's of much greater importance plays into almost everything that we do goes deep down into the language game itself into the very depth of what the language game is. So it's not an, an extra added bonus, but it takes a very great and important part in all understanding. Here it can even be said to be suggested that without aspect seeing, there can be no understanding whatsoever. That would in that case equal aspect blindness with a more stronger variety of meaning blindness. is uh, sort of graver symptoms or graver disease altogether. That's, this is, I think this is a hard note to something that's very complicated or tough to approach and i think it lies in the very nature of what it is that it's every time we see someone for instance will we see that person from a different direction under different circumstances and you yourself will be different in that specific moment. And that in itself shows that without aspect understanding you cannot be able to see that person as the same. And I know this is a, a very odd conclusion of this something not really expected from the outset. But rule following is yet another expansion of this, where you need to model or try out the different possibilities of aspect seeing, seeing it from different directions. And firstly then it would be possible to, to see the development over, over time in, uh, for instance, a speech series and that would be something that would not be possible at all if it weren't for that series. I'm going to put a pause here and continue. Sorry for that. Stop here. I'll continue with Ohad's interesting article about aspect blindness. In a nutshell, one could say, what is at stake here is the whole idea of, well, look at it this way, perception, you never see the whole side of a face, you see just a side, just like you can only see one side of the coin. That's a very good metaphor here. 
but to be able to see that the face has identity, that it belongs to a person who is one, who has an identity. We need to have aspect seeing because oddly enough a person's face is very similar to a duck rabbit. No joke intended here. Well that's exactly what it is about. We will not be able to perceive it as one singular individual. And this is also something that is now popping up from the science of neurology and science of cognition as well. I think it's called prognosia. People are not able to recognize faces lack of aspect seeing is what is causative here One will need to be able to see differences, different angles, and depending also on what state you are yourself, that is also very important. And that aspect see, seeing is the only thing that can build up an identity of a person, or why not an object? It's a necessary attribute it to me any possibility of seeing something as something. Wittgenstein also means that the concept is of utmost importance. concept could be said to help you see what's what it is that you're looking at it can pick out the certain feature or can sort of expose, develop the aspect to one single thing. And nota bene, it doesn't work this way as I explained, not stepwise. The understanding of the unity of one person from different aspects, it's not the composition of the different aspects adding up to one. The 
instead it's happen happen simultaneously directly without any sort of delay language itself and rule following is also deeply connected to aspect seeing and also the ability as i mentioned before rule following you need to be able to more or less at the same time see different connectivities in a long series of and the examples are here coming from mathematics but language itself is a sort of rule following. The words themselves have that exact quality of being under a certain rule. Things that we previously mentioned many times here as for instance meaning, intention, hope, when we use those expressions, we are following a rule. And before we have just called that, that there exists the corollary, coronary, but there is also a rule going on for the specific expression. There is something to follow. And all concepts, they have different rules. And how do we identify them as being of the same rule? Well, once more, as the most pertinent and important factor of rule following. And without that, there will be no possibility of rule following at all. And I think this adds a very interesting and important extra dimension to the concepts and 
the words we've been discussing so much before. And it also is very helpful. Corollary in all its beauty is fantastic to have an outside check if it is correct. But a rule, if you add that, you get maybe a more a fuller understanding. Is also what Wittgenstein in remarks on the philosophy of psychology and philosophical investigations, etc. The Brown Book and in many other of his later scriptures, very special in settle, uses rule following explaining how the concept of hope is working. And for instance, unlike the emotion of anger, there is no clear evidence that you can see on a person that he is hoping or has some sort of that thing of duration, hearing, and many of the senses, they who do have a duration. You see something for a while, and then you see something else. That is something also of a rule following. And of course now you understand he uses rule, the word rule in the most specific way. Compare that with what we spoke about in the Edmund Dane article about the stone. The stone doesn't have the, the concept of life doesn't stick to it. And that is part of the rule or how the expression of life functions. It's necessary of the substance of the word. That is what the substance of the word is. It's rude. It's also what makes you understand when to use the expression. But it gives also substance to the expression. And both those two features are very important. Knowing how to use them and that they have a substance to them. 
they are substantial. They're not airy, nonsensical as words often become seen. Modern Argo. They lose something. They don't have that particular je ne sais quoi. They make them to exist. Of course, all this understanding make, makes the old way of understanding these things a representation of God. Makes both, both words and world non substantial, having no depth, no density to them, no weight. Airy and non, they don't bring anything. Therefore, we often go to the default mood of experience, they all get reduced to being an experience. And if hope becomes only an experience, you would lose its met, its ability to metamorph you into possibly a more well-trained person. Because there is a hope that training could change you into a slimmer, more athletic person. The representation of the Saussurian sign and sign it signified, all those things lose their, their weight, their ability to speak for themselves. The place in the language game to maybe to be compared to those two persons making a wall and asking for a slate of each other. The word slate needs the substance it gets from being the thing that is passed between them, filled with beton or cement, or not filled with beton and cement. It get that substance from participating in the exchange of the slate between them through the baton. Can you see how what you do, what purposes there are, are intertwined? It's a big weave. This big weave 
is what make both the word and what you do functional. The interweavenness is what makes the rule as well. The rule is not single handedly on the inside nor on the outside. Those factors just don't, are, are not helpful. Not helpful to think of the rule as being on the inside or on the outside. Now you also see how such a nonsensical example as putting bricks on a wall actually shows the richness of the most precious fantastic aspirations within the most delicate emotions are all stemming from this interweavedness such are the rules of the words that it makes color possible makes it possible to see things as they are otherwise you wouldn't see much or almost nothing Very little. No, I say very little, if anything. To be more or less correct. This dangerous coronary or outsideness with its root. It's a fantastic opportunity. And when the private language idea slowly, slowly dissolves like salt in the water, a liberation takes place, liberating the concepts once more. They are rule following, not isolate bits of God knows what in a Newtonian empty universe built up with things that are never used and therefore have no rules. The 
discussed earlier, the rather new expression. Consciousness. Well, there is much debate these days within philosophy and other areas. What is consciousness? But few, if any, are looking into that. That word doesn't have a fit place in the language game. You can you can use it in whatever sense you want, since it doesn't have like. The slate, a uh, thing to do. A purpose, a telos, something that it can keep itself busy with but also that will be of great help to you. You can strengthen yourself by going to the outside, so to speak, and put your concept, your words, to the test of the others, their interaction, into the game, so to speak. Do not do the thing that someone did when he fell off a horse. Refrain from riding the horse. Now, go into the game. See how it strengthens the innermost of you, giving those vacuous concepts back their sense of liveliness and just sheer substantiality. Factors we all mean are very important. bringing substance back to its proper place. You see it. And not just a belief in it, This is also why we mentioned earlier that being not not being in the understanding how concepts works and having the full understanding, why not why not being under the captivity of the picture? That would mean that you if you were this slate experiment if you like of putting a wall together, your part would not be working to the fullest possible. There would be friction, bricks would be lost, broken, cement would not be placed in the proper place and so forth. So non-understanding and not knowing 
is a way of move about things. It's a particular kind of doing. And slowly as understanding comes, there will be also change in the movement. It'll be smoother, more informed, better directed, more skillful, advanced, complex. When your understanding come, slowly evolves, is the words I should use, your way of moving about will also greatly improve. Because that changing movement is the understanding and nothing else. Strictly speaking, there is no understanding inside the head, or understanding do not correspond to a particular brain state. Idea here is we think about the military example, the one who instead as the order go to the left went to the right. The misunderstanding is not inside his head, it is in what he did. Now we stop making sense of the expression, or oh, I mistook it or I misremembered or something similar. The innerness is confusing in this case. It is blatantly obvious for everyone that he did not understood, that he hasn't understood. You don't need a microscope for that or having to do some massive introspection. It will be clear at the very outset. Nothing more will be needed. And still what you will be left with is more than plenty. Yeah, we have the arrow as one of the examples is that's from the remarks of the philosophy of psychology. 
And I think this is a very good pointer of Wittgenstein. Anyone who cannot understand and learn to use the words, to see the sign as, as an arrow, that's whom I call meaning line. It will make no sense to tell him. You must try and see it as an arrow. And one won't be able to help him in that way. And to see that arrow as pointing upwards also needs that person need to see the other angles and that, that they are actually pointing in other directions. Other aspects are helping to bring about the identity of an arrow that points solely upwards. How strange that even might sound. This is exactly what aspect seeing does to a yeah. depicted arrow. I think there could be some middle way here when you have a partial meaning line as but what it makes you do is to misunderstand the meaning and you will think that the arrow is pointing to the left, to the right. It's a variety that could be feasibly thought of. It's a bit like Heraclitus, which seems, sounds so odd, did sound odd almost already when the words were uttered but now we can see the truth of it without the oppositions we don't have unity we cannot see the two sides of the coin at the same time but we can in a way see directly it's a coin with two sides it does not take some weird extra seeing on both sides at the same time. It is doable, it is workable, something that can be done. And we do it regularly on an everyday basis. But we've forgotten or we never thought of that this is actually how it works. You never see the both sides of the coin. You never see a face for what it is, so to speak, in an analytical sense. I better round off here. I say thank you very much and have a pleasant evening, night, wherever you are. <laughs>